sorry about the delay. We had a bit of a technical hitch there. We were having a panic. However, uh, welcome everybody. Um, as you know, this is Good Friday. So this is the day that we remember what Christ did for us on the cross. So we've put together a wee bit of a slideshow here with a lot of music. There's some stories going to be told. And you all have a part to play. Because what you have to do now tonight is use your imagination. You need to be in Jerusalem when you're watching all this. Watching what's going on at the cross. Feeling what's going on at the cross. And just being there while he's being crucified. So, without further ado, I'm going to just start with a prayer. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for bringing us here tonight to worship you. On this day, Good Friday, we remember your sacrifice for us. We remember all that you went through that day because of your great love for us. Help us tonight to immerse ourselves in your story so we can appreciate you more, love you more, serve you more, and follow you more closely. Bless everyone here tonight, and may all of us sense your presence with us in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to start with singing, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And if you know any of the, mu the hymns as we go through, feel free to sing along. The words will be up.
the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street. But the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die. My name is Martha, and I come from a small village called Bethany near Jerusalem. I live with my brother Lazarus and sister Mary. We had to come. He was our friend. Jesus was our friend. He came to our house every time he was in the area and stayed with us. We fed him and let him rest for as long as he needed. How has it come to this? Why did he have to die in such a horrible death? He didn't deserve it. When he came to my house, I was also always so busy fussing around, making meals and serving, washing dusty clothes, and I missed so much of what he had to say. My sister Mary sat with him and hung on his every word. I used to get annoyed with her for not helping me, but oh, how I wish I could do that now to sit at his feet and just listen to his voice. Listen to him teaching us the word of God, teaching us how to live, just spending time with him. 
laughing, talking, comfortable in his presence. If I'd known how short our time would be, I would have done things differently. You know, our brother Lazarus died, and we were grieving and so bereft. And yet when Jesus came, he wept too. And then he did such a miraculous thing. He called to Lazarus, and he'd been dead for four days by then, and would have smelt very bad. Oh, but lo and behold, out of the tomb he came, alive and well, stumbling over the grave clothes still wrapped around him. Jesus told me that if I believed, I would see the glory of God, and I did. Oh, the joy and happiness at being reunited. That's when I really believed Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. But he was our friend too. My heart is breaking to know he will not be coming to our house ever again. We will never hear his sweet voice again or look into those beautiful, kind eyes. Mary seemed to understand his time was near. Maybe he told her during one of their long conversations. I just wonder, because just last week, Jesus came to us again on his way to Jerusalem for the Passover. Again, I was serving, cooking, while Lazarus and Mary sat with them. Then Mary got up and brought our expensive perfume, Spikenard, which we keep for anointing the body before burial. It's very expensive. But Mary poured quite a lot of it over Jesus' feet. She rubbed it in and wiped it with her hair. The musky smell was everywhere. And you know, I can still smell it from her hair as we stand here at the cross. Would she know he would be buried soon? Mm. What an awful sight, watching our friend hanging there in agony. Every now and then he shouts out to God, and his poor mother is distraught. But John, one of Jesus' followers, is with her. Jesus told him to look after her. See, even in agony and death, he is thinking about others, loving and caring. We love him so much, and it's so hard to watch. But, but we had to be here just to show him we care and love him. Strange things are happening here now, terrifying and confusing things. I don't know what will happen next, but I don't think this is the end of Jesus' story. I'm hoping he will live again, just like he said he would. He did it for Lazarus, after all, and I know he is the Son of God. Amen.
called him Savior, he was still her little child. When he grew in strength and wisdom, he was still her little child. My name is Petronius, and I am a Roman soldier, a centurion in Caesar's army. I command 80 men in Jerusalem, and one of our duties is to crucify those who found guilty of terrible time crimes. Not a pleasant task, but part of my duties nonetheless. Earlier that day, I had been given custody of two robbers who were sentenced for crucifixion. And then we were summoned to Pilate's house, the governor of the area. A man was standing with a criminal called Barabbas. Pilate was asking the crowd that who they wanted to be free, as in that time it was a custom at the Jewish Passover that a prisoner would be pardoned. They were shouting, Barabbas, Barabbas, even though we knew he was a robber and a murderer. The other man seemed to have offended the Jews in some way. Pilate seemed to think this other man called Jesus was innocent of all charges and tried to persuade the crowd to let him go. But they were so angry and became louder and louder, screaming to Pilate, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate was afraid a riot would start. It was as if, as if they were possessed by an evil spirit. So Pilate relented and let Barabbas go. He washed his hands in front of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The man Jesus was handed over to my soldiers to be flogged. My men mocked him by putting a purple robe on him, a sign of royalty. The people had called him King of the Jews. They also put a crown of thorns on his head and mocked him saying, Hail Majesty, King of the Jews. They spat on him and hit him on the head, pushing the thorns further into his brow. When the flogging was over, he could hardly walk and wasn't able to carry the heavy cross. So I ordered my men to get someone to help. They dragged a man out of the crowd and ordered him to, to carry it. There were large crowds along the way and we had to keep pushing them back. Some were shouting angrily, 
but there was also a group of women following him and weeping. He spoke to them words which seemed soothing them, but I didn't understand. We also had the other two criminals walking with us, and when we reached the crucifixion site, we nailed them all to the crossbeams and hoisted them up onto the upright stakes. The man Jesus was so serene, even in, mid in the midst of all this pain and agony, as the guards hammered the nails into his hands and feet as hard as they could, he began to pray over and over. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. I thought, why is he saying this? I just didn't understand how he could forgive us like that for all we had done to him. There was a great crowd watching, and the Jewish leaders were sneering at Jesus and mocking him. They said he couldn't even save himself, so how was he going to save others? My soldiers joined in and tried to give him vinegar to drink, and they gambled with each other for his clothes. They had put a sign up over his head saying, This man is the king of the Jews, and this made them laugh even more. Even one of the other men on the cross asked him, Why don't you save yourself and us too? But the one on the other side seemed to realize that this man was special. He asked Jesus to show him grace and take him into his everlasting kingdom. Jesus promised him he would that very day. What a strange thing to say. Now, watching all this, I was starting to think that maybe this man was special in some way, and then at midday, it suddenly became darker as the sunlight faded. It lasted three hours. Then suddenly Jesus shouted out loudly, Father, I surrender my spirit into your hands. He took a final gasp and died. It was unusual for someone to die as quickly as they usually lingered there for more than one day. At that moment, the veil of the Jewish temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Men had come running to tell the Jewish leaders. The earth was shaking violently. Rocks were split apart and graves opened in the cemetery. Dead people seemed to come alive again and the crowd were terrified. And it was very confusing and frightening. No one knew what was happening, but I knew this. As I watched this innocent man die, I knew that he was surely the Son of God. There is no doubt in my mind now that he was innocent, and no doubt in my mind who he was. I'll never, I've never been a religious man, but because he said I was forgiven, now I glorify God. Amen.
My name is Simon, and I come from Cyrene in Libya. I came to Jerusalem with my two sons, Alexander and Rufus, for Passover. We brought our sacrificial lamb, and the boys were looking after it. The atmosphere in Jerusalem at Passover is always great. There's hustle and bustle and excitement, friends meeting friends again after a long time, chat, catching up, laughter, rejoicing. But this year it was different. There was loud shouting, angry voices, and the atmosphere was ugly. We tried to push through to get to the temple, but the crowds were lining the road out of town, leading to a hill called Golgotha. They were watching a man carrying a cross, or rather the crossbeam of a cross. He was barely recognizable as a man. So beaten was he. His skin was ripped to pieces by a flogging. And he had a crown on his head made of long spiky thorns. Blood was running down his face and neck and his body was covered with blood. Some dried and some still wet and flowing. The crowds were mocking him and throwing things at him, spitting and saying foul things to him. And they were calling him King of the Jews. I didn't realize, under I didn't really understand what was going on. But I wanted to get my boys away from this awful sight. But suddenly a Roman soldier grabbed my arm and shoved me in front of this man who I now knew was called Jesus. He had fallen onto his knees from utter exhaustion and agony. The soldier shouted at me to carry his cross for a while. My boys were frightened, but I told them to follow us and it would be all right. This man Jesus looked me straight in the eyes as I bent down to take the weight off his shoulders. Beautiful eyes, piercing eyes, but full of love and compassion. A look I'd never experienced before. Who was this man? I lifted the cross onto my shoulders it was very heavy and covered in his blood. And now the blood was running down my face too. The soldier prodded me to move forward. And I started walking. Jesus stood up and slowly, painfully followed. Then we reached Golgotha, where the crucifixions were to take place. There were too many of us for crucifixion and the soldiers nailed them to crosses that left the middle one empty. The soldiers threw Jesus down on the ground and spread his arms wide against the crossbeam. With mighty bangs, they hammered nails into his hands. It was agony, for they were thick nails. I was trying to shield my boys from the sight, and yet I couldn't drag myself away. Then they drove a nail through his ankles and lifted him up high. As I stood watching, I heard the people talking round me and I soon discovered who this man was. They said he was Jesus, the Christ, who had come to bring salvation, the son of the most high God. He looked at me once more as I stood in the crowd with my boys. At that moment our eyes met. And I knew, I knew who he was. I knew he loved me. I knew he was dying for me. I don't know how I knew, I just did. My boys wanted me to explain what was going on. So I told them, the man dying on that cross is now our sacrificial lamb. We no longer need a lamb for sacrifice. 
His blood is being poured out for us. Remember what the scriptures say in Isaiah. I offered my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who pulled my beard. I did not hide my face from mockery and spitting. And his face was so disfigured he hardly seemed human. And also, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. For the transgressions of my people he was punished. So, my sons, behold the Lamb of God. Amen. Behold the Lamb. Christ lived the life we could not live and took the punishment we could not take to offer the hope we cannot resist. Why? Jesus was angry enough to purge the temple, distraught enough to weep in public, captivating enough to attract children, poor enough to sleep on dirt, responsible enough to care for his mother, tempted enough to know the smell of Satan, why? Why would God's only Son endure earth's toughest pain? So that you and I would know that he is able. Able to run to the cry of those who are being tempted, tested and tried. Whatever we're facing, he knows how we feel. When we turn to him for help, he runs to help us. Why? Because he's been there. He's not ashamed of us. Our actions don't bewilder him. Our tilted halos don't trouble him. So go to him. God wants to forgive us. All it takes is repentance on our part. It took a great deal more than that on God's part. It took his life, his blood, and his death on the cross. We're just going to finish now with a final hymn. You'll probably know it, so if you want, sing along. Maybe you would stand. How deep the Father's love for us beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing love the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory Oh,
dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no But I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart, His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my Father, we thank you for this remembrance of the cross. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only son to die in our place so we might be forgiven. May we never forget the sacrifice you made and help us to repay that debt by giving ourselves completely to your service. May our love for you be rekindled and may our lives reflect your great love. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Be with each one of us as we go our separate ways now. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Could we maybe say the grace together just before we go? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody.